access point downtown. The streets conform to a rigid grid pattern where the major streets are exactly one mile apart and have address numbers which are in multiples of 800. You don't really have to be able to picture this, but I know that if you know it, you're nodding your head vigorously, but just know that it's amazing. And I was mesmerized by it. So much so. Wife and I could quiz ourselves on the 2,000 mile road trip from San Francisco to Chicago. Yes, I was always like this. Division is 1,200 north. Armitage is 2,000 north, and therefore one mile north of Division. After living in the jumble of San Francisco streets for years, the thought of moving to a place where people planned the city to help people know where they were and where they were going soothed my lizard brain and gave me peace. That doesn't happen. As humans have developed cities and built environments, we have also needed to develop ways to find our way through them. Signage goes back at least as far as the Roman Empire. They constructed milestones along their roadways. Which is to say, if you're relying on anything besides natural features to help you find your way around, you are relying on things made by people whose job it is, is to help us figure out how to get from all of our respective point A's to our point B's. Our producer, Sam Greenspan, would like me to tell you that he has a fantastic sense of direction. I really do. Oh, sure, I get lost sometimes, I'll admit it. It's the worst. I get so mad at myself when it happens. But now, my life is completely different ever since I started thinking about what it means that wayfinding is a thing. Wayfinding, in this sense, is a branch of environmental graphic design concerned with helping people find their way. I love knowing this because now, when I get lost in a hospital or in a complicated freeway interchange or at an airport, I have someone to blame. Yeah, that's one way to look at it, but a lot of times it has nothing to do with the signage. User error does apply sometimes. Fair enough. Let me introduce you to Jim Harding. Well, my name is Jim Harding. I'm an environmental graphic designer. Basically, I tell people where to go. There's an environmental graphic designer or wayfinder or maybe just a kid with a magic marker behind every sign. Turn here to merge onto the world. Invisible. They're baked into the built environment. I first heard about Jim Harding through a writer named David Zweig. I'm David Zweig. I'm a writer. My book is called Invisibles, The Power of Anonymous Work in an Age of Relentless Self-Promotion. David Zweig's book is a series of portraits of people whom he refers to as invisibles. Invisibles are people who are highly skilled professionals, people who are really important to whatever enterprise or endeavor that they're a part of. That Jim Harding, director of environmental graphics for Gresham Smith and Partners, is one such invisible. Jim Harding is one of the best in the business. Jim worked on the new international terminal at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia, the world's busiest. 100 million passengers move through it every year, all of them needing to know where to go. Flight lines are so important because if you can see your destination, you don't have to rely on signs. I met Jim at the Atlanta airport, and he walked me through some of the cutting-edge wayfinding techniques that he employed at the new international terminal. Like right when you walk in from curbside, the physical space tells you everything you need to know about how to move through it without you even realizing it. Let's start at the first thing you want when you enter the airport, the ticket counter. You're not lined up on my gate. But these angled ticket counters subtly push you in the right direction. The angle steers you down and around the ticket counter and heading toward the security checkpoint. As the counter is pushing you, <gasps> you're also getting pulled by this giant three-story glass window that looks out onto the tarmac. You see planes, you see the apron, the jetway where the planes are parking, and so intuitively you're drawn. They just beckon you to follow them. And so if you do that, you inevitably head toward security. But there's even more going on in the floor than that. And here's where this gets a little bananas. You turn around and look back here, Sam. You see where the black starts at the door from yeah. the curbside? There's another set of tiles inside the dominant grid pattern that I didn't even notice at first. It starts black, and then it's joined by a set of yellow, goldish tiles that kind of cleaves out this corridor of negative space, which cuts straight through the hall, going directly to security. So, you know, if I already have my ticket, I'm not checking anything. Exactly what it is, the yellow brick road. That's exactly what this is. The little light bulb. Yeah. It's clicking on you. It's pretty cool. And all of this, Jim says, is 100% intentional. Absolutely. Our interior designers went through a number of floor pattern design schemes until we arrived at this one. 
On the other side of security, we enter what Jim Harding calls the transition hall. Here's where a traveler has some decisions to make, whether to 